the slides some more than movie okay i'll i'll do that okay Yes, it is in a okay. slide, so and uh, just move one slide only. Oh, that should be all right. That should not be a problem. Okay, okay, okay then. Okay, my dear students. Uh, so we will start our uh, spot session three. Uh, <clears throat> I will be projecting one uh, slide, which may be an ECG or a pressure tracing or a uh, echo cardio echo imaging or maybe even a, a, a angiogram. So. Um, you may you have to make the diagnosis okay or anybody can attempt and let us uh, get more and more people getting involved in the uh, discussion okay best wishes i think they will be of uh, use to you in your examination also okay first slide ecg any volunteers who would like to uh, interpret the ecg garo we missed you last class why don't you try Uh, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, twelve lead uh, ECG, sir. Sir, okay. standardization. I am not able to standardization is. Uh, okay, the, it is normal. Okay. Yes, sir. Standardization. Standard. So you can see the standardization. It is the standardization here. Are you going to see the standardization? So that. Uh, This is that the box. Is That oh, box mark is, is not. Ah, uh, yes, 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 sir, yes. This yes, is the standard. Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, yes. Okay. Yes, sir, rhythm strip uh, down, sir. B one is the rhythm strip, sir. Okay. And uh, sir, it is B uh, one. It, it will be easier for you to first interpret the twelve lead electrocardiogram and then go to the other. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, so first uh, coming on to. Uh, Sir, I am not able to make a definite P wave, sir. Definite uh, P. No, I don't see the P wave here. Lead to. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lead to. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. What is wrong with you? Are you having a visual problem? <laughs> no, 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 sir. <laughs> Actually, I was seeing that V one lead. I was finding then the lead V one. So it was. I was searching in the V one, sir. The mystery. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Always, whenever you are in doubt about P wave, you should always search lead to and V one both. Yes, sir. Actually, I was in the rhythm strip. I was trying to search, sir. There, I was not able. To. Yes, oh. sir. In the rhythm strip, also one is lead two, another is V one, and in lead two, you can still the P see the P waves very well. Yes, sir. We can definitely see P waves. So coming on to the axis, sir. It is oh. a, a negative in a, a lead one and positive in area. So it is more of a left. Uh, Uh, no, no. Positive in lead two, three AVF and negative in lead one, sir. So towards right, sir. Rightward axis. Okay. What will be the axis, sir? Around uh, AVL is also negative, sir. So more than ninety, more than around hundred, sir. Around hundred. So when the when the lead one is negative, it is beyond ninety degrees. Yes, sir. More than hundred. Yes, sir. More than. So it may be around. Uh, so there is right axis deviation. What is yes, the sir. angle? Where you call it is right axis deviation. More than ninety. Right axis. axis. More than more than ninety. More than that. No, 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 no. Ninety is not enough. Hundred ten, sir. Hundred ten. It should be hundred and ten. Beyond hundred and ten, up to hundred and eighty. When it goes beyond hundred and eighty, then you take it as right upper quadrant axis. It is an abnormal axis. So, what is the angle? What is the axis for left axis deviation? Sir, uh, more than hundred. More than uh, minus thirty, sir. A uh, minus thirty two. Uh, minus ninety. Minus ninety. So minus thirty to minus ninety, and usually normal axis is zero to ninety, and zero to minus thirty is uh, axis towards the left, and uh, ninety to hundred ten is axis towards the right. But if you want to call it as right axis deviation, it is hundred ten to hundred eighty, and left axis deviation is minus thirty to minus ninety. Okay, right. Yes. And sir, B one there is a QRBB pattern. We can say, sir. Okay. B1. even there is qrbb pattern so v2 v3 v4 v2 v3 v4 yes sir yes sir there is a loss of r a loss of r in v so the sudden uh, q 
two or maybe two two is because but q wave is uh... yeah, because sir there is st elevation with t up yeah there right. is a, there is an st elevation and uh, probably t is getting inverted but there is a st elevation mm. c yes v3 and v4 is still upright sir yeah, v2 v3 and even v4 that may indicate that it's a, a recent, recent. anti normal michael infarction with rbb and uh, evidence of uh, uh, q waves in v1 v2 v3 v4 and uh, what else lv forces are not very much so we can see that lv forces are not uh, so uh, loss of r and there is irregular, irregular. No, 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 before that is there a, how will you explain the axis axis more than 110 near about RB. 120 120 right axis deviation with rbb yeah. pattern with uh, i have to look for any other uh, block is left posterior hemi block yes, left, left posterior, posterior hemi block block yes, so, yes what is the axis in a patient with right bundle back block right the normal axis, axis. yeah right. normal block you can go near about up to near, near up to 90 degrees you can go up to 90 degrees but even if it goes beyond 90 degrees that, that cannot be explained by right bundle back block only so here the axis is about 110 beyond 90 degrees so you have to think of the possibility of associated Left hemiblock. Left, left posterior hemiblock. Post okay. Then coming to the electrocardiogram rhythm strip. Sir, a prolonged PR is there. I can see that lead to one prolonged PR interval around more than two. Yes, sir. More than 200 is there, sir. Prolonged PR interval. Okay. Um, progressive PR. Is it, sir, a first degree Vanky back progressive PR interval and Sir, in the lead two, sir, we can see progressive PR in. There is a. Why, why there is a change in the morphology of the correspondence? So there is a, sir, a first two beats are the sinus beat. After that, there is a PR interval with uh, in, increase with sir, uh, uh, bundle, uh, sir, some interventricular conduction detects. Sir, this is lead two. This is lead two. And this is V1. Okay, sir. Uh, sir so, uh, in the lead two, sir, we are uh, seeing the white QRS with uh, slurred S waves. Sir, okay. sir, uh, so, sir, interventricular conduction detect is present. Okay. Uh, now, sir, uh, after that next beat, uh, uh, so there is, uh, uh, there are, um, sir, again, do, once, uh, do you think yes. that there is a there is a P inside this? Uh, yes, sir. Can we? Can we? Uh, is there a P inside this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why, sir, uh, there is a pause. Yes. Okay, that is not being conducted. Yeah, there is a good possibility that there is a P here, which is blocked and it is not being conducted. Not being conducted. And there is a P wave, there is a conduction. Okay. Uh -huh. What is this axis? So this uh, uh, two is uh, isoelectric. It means... Uh, no, no, it is not isoelectric, it is more negative. Yes, a little more negative, right, sir. Yes. Uh, so, sir, it uh, may indicate that the axis may be plus 150 or... Uh, yes, sir. It, it may be negative also, ne minus yes. 140, more beyond minus 30. Yes, sir. Of these two, which is the more likely possibility? So, positive is more likely because lead 3 is positive, sir. So, uh -huh. mostly towards the positive only because lead 3 is positive. And AVR no, lead 3 is not shown here. Where is the lead 3 here? The upper, upper, sir. Open lead. Lead. That is, uh, see, in the in the standard uh, yes, uh, interpretation. No, the two ECG has been taken at the different I am asking sir. you that where there is a change in the pattern of the QRs and lead to, yes, that, does this indicate left axis deviation or right, more right axis deviation? So I'll go the with left. more. 
sir left more, more right sir because avr is also negative avl is also negative and 2 3 avf are uh, so karo you are not getting my question yes See, sir, sir. In the uh, 12-lead electrocardiogram, we have analyzed it. We have found that there is right axis deviation. Let's yes, finish. Let's finish. Okay, sir. Now okay, go sir. to the rhythm strip. Rhythm but from strip the rhythm is... strip, it looks little more towards left. Yes. Why do why why are you saying it is more towards left? Sir, because sir, the negative uh, deflection is more. So why can't, it be, uh, why, can't, why can't it be plus 150? Why can't it be plus 160 or uh, beyond that? Do you like to? Uh, the extreme, extreme axis you are telling northwest. Extreme. Sir, so northwest axis. Ah, not northwest axis. Plus one hundred and fifty. That is in the still in the right axis deviation range. Yes, sir. Plus one hundred and fifty. It can be there, sir. Plus one hundred and fifty. Now, if you look at the, if you look at the uh, uh, circumstances, do you think that the left axis deviation is more likely or right axis deviation is more likely? Because we have already. Seen that the uh, standard electrocardiogram we found right axis deviation we have diagnosed the posterior hemi block and so here uh, which one is more likely left axis or right axis? Sir, which can explain this abnormal electrocardiogram? Patient is having uh, conduction abnormalities also. Uh, sir, there is alternating bundle branch is also there, sir. Because after three beats, again we are seeing that can we? If you do you, you look at the lower one also? Is there an alternating bundle branch block? No, no, no. That but that is V one, so that is not giving. V one also is you are showing this conduction of normality, all those things. Whenever you find this type of an electrocardiogram, where you find that the, the limb, chest leads are not showing any variation in the QRS morphology, while the limb leads are showing this type of a pattern, you should always suspect the possibility of intermittent left anterior and left posterior hemiblock. So this uh, uh, the standard ones are due to left posterior hemiblock, and this. Uh, Intermittent ones are due to left anterior hemi block. And you can see that this patient is having a, a higher grade block where it has gone into uh, a PUA is not conducted, associated with the uh, infra ECN uh, conduction abnormality. And uh, uh, this qualifies for a triphysicular yes, block, which yes, is a right bundle branch block, le uh, the right left posterior hemi block. Left anterior hemi block and uh, uh, intermittently a uh, PUA is dropped, giving rise to a heavy uh, uh, block also. So, this is a triphysicular block where you have got evidence of all the three physicals are involved and uh, associated with anterior or myocardial function. No, uh, anterior or myocardial function. This is a difficult ECG, but I am giving you a clue. Whenever you see an electrocardiogram where the limb, chest leads are not showing any. Uh, QRS abnormality. While the uh, limb leads are showing abnormality in between, then you should always think of a change in axis of the QRS complex. And the commonest cause is intermittent left anterior fascicular and left posterior fascicular block. So, one question here, sir, it is QRBB, so approximal LED should have been the culprit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just approximal LED. Uh, so, the, when there is a QRBB, you should consider the possibility of a proximal LED occlusion. So, did he improve with the uh, uh, angioplasty or sir, we have to put uh, because oh, this, was, this, this is an electrocardiogram of almost uh, 25 years ago taken. This is an electrocardiogram which, uh, which was taken when I was the uh, professor of cardiology at Kota Medical College. This was almost 25 years ago. The patient we put in a uh, permanent basement. Oops. At that time, we didn't do an angioplasty or anything. We did a permanent pacemaker. He recovered satisfactorily. And over a period of time, surprisingly, his conduction abnormality, everything became normal. And it becomes normal sinus conduction. Everything normal. Even the right bundle branch block disappeared. Everything disappeared. Sir, so there is uh, 
Okay, we'll go to the next one. Anybody can try? Saroj, we can try. Sir, 12D TCG. Hmm. Sir, standardization normal. The heart rate is around uh, sir, 150. Yes. Sir, P waves are not seen. Hmm. Uh, but seen after the, the QRS complexes, hmm. both in B1 as well as the lead 2. Hmm. Sir, so this is a uh, sir, uh, nodal tachycardia hmm. or sir, it may be uh, sir, uh, sir, after that sir, in the uh, V1 in the rhythm is big, the heart rate has increased, you know sir? Uh, ah, slightly more. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it has increased. So sir, uh, this, this is a uh, sir, uh, either junctional tachycardia or AV nodal re-entry tachycardia, sir. Okay. So what, what do you mean by AV nodal re-entry tachycardia? Or, a, this is a problem of diagnosing junctional tachycardia because so what is the, uh, the, the uh, yes, morphology of the... The P wave will be inverted, sir. Yeah, it lead, it lead yeah. to lead 3 and AV, you find yes, the P wave is upright. Yes, sir. Rather here we are seeing pseudo S wave in yes, lead sir. 2. Yes. There are so, both sir, NRT, sir. Pseudo R and pseudo S are there. So, AVNRT will be a. Uh, no, 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 no. What did you say? AVNRT? Pseudo R and pseudo S, we can say no. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, there is a it one is... more possibility also, sir. Uh, maybe AVNRT, but usually in case of AVNRT, we may not be able to see the R wave. It may be buried into the QRS complex. Here, sir, one more DD will come. That's a long RP tachycardia. Uh, will it come, sir? Yeah, that's it. Now, see, AV and RT, what is the, where is the usual P wave? Sir, sir P, P wave is inscribed into QRS or yeah. it is, uh, just if it is after. Just see. Yes, if usually. It is after the QRS, then it will be less than 70 milliseconds. Yeah, usually in AV and RT, the P wave is inside the QRS complex. Or maybe partly inside and partly outside. Yes, sir. Here fully it is outside, sir. So it is fully inside. outside. Yes. So sir. what is well, in which one do you, P you can get the, the P -P sir, PGRT? Uh, PGRT also. Eh? Sir, we have to differentiate between sir uh, uh, RP uh, more than seventy millisecond or less than seventy millisecond. Yes, and also uh, of course this is uh, 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 proximal junctional tachycardia is a possibility. Yes, a PGRT. Yeah, yeah, I think that is the one which you have to think of. The, that's a strong possibility. The long RP tachycardia. Yeah, yes, yes. I think that this actually was a uh, proximal junction tachycardia. And the uh, uh, patient, we didn't do anything. Patient was hemodynamically stable. He is spontaneously recovered. Okay. But so, age of the patient, sir, age of the patient, not the age of the... I don't remember. This return here, 65 years. In lead then, one, uh, you can the, see 60. 65 so, years. The PJRT in 65 years is. Uh, that is. No, I agree with you that uh, PJRT okay, can occur in ischemia also. So this patient had uh, um, uh, there are Q waves and seen in V1, V2, and rudimentary are in V3. And so he had a previous uh, 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 anterior migraine infarction, and he came with presented with this uh, uh, arrhythmia. Okay, we we'll go to the next one. Any volunteers? Anybody can try? Nikhil, would you like uh, to try? Sir, it is uh, 12 lead ECG, sir. Okay. Uh, in uh, uh, th there are multiple uh, P, wa uh, P waves, sir, uh, before the QRS complex. Mm. Uh, negative P waves are there, sir, uh, mm. like sawtooth appearance. Mm. Uh, so, uh, this is the case of arterial flutter, sir. Okay. With uh, variable, uh, with block. variable blocks, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Varying block. Uh, the, yes, sir. The 4 is to 1 and uh, I think 3 is to 1. Four yes, is one, three is one uh, uh, block. Okay, right. Yes. What else? Okay, there is QS also from V one to V three. V one. 
discussion anybody who would like to uh, give a uh, opinion show would you like to give an opinion anybody okay say the uh, a typical flutter is the, the the flutter waves are usually picked up in b1 that's the usual pattern it is best seen in b1 and in a typical flutter usually the reentry circuit can be anywhere in the atrium more often in the intraatrial septum so with, because it has got multiple reentry sites ablation is not possible so in a patient with atrial flutter where the flutter waves are best seen in v1 it qualifies for a typical flutter where the uh, end reentry site the 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 reentry site is uh, anywhere in the atrium most often in the intraatrial septum and it is not amenable to Uh, radio frequency ablation because of its multiple sites while in the, the typical flutter it is in the cox triangle and you will be able to ablate the arrhythmia with very good result so this is a case of typical atrial flutter in a patient with anterior myocardial infarction recent anterior myocardial infarction where there is also st sim in the elevation scene so how will you diagnose atrial flutter anyone of you how will you diagnose what is the usual rate Rate is around one fifty, sir. Yeah, yeah. Usually, atrial flutter very often you get the fixed rate. Um, fixed rate. Atrial flutter yeah. rate will be around three hundred, and the ventricular rate will be either seventy five or one hundred fifty. So yeah. whenever you find that the patient is having a rate of one hundred fifty, sometimes the, uh, the 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 flutter wave what you are seeing is between the two cuirass complex and the other two flutter waves may be inside the cuirass complex. So you should be very careful whenever there is a fixed rate of one hundred fifty. You should carefully look for whether it is an atrial flutter or not. And sometimes uh, uh, more, uh, you can get a fixed rate seventy five, where it is a four east one conduction. Usually, the flutter uh, atrial ventricular conduction is either four east one or two east one. That is usual pattern. Here, I, some of the conductions are three east one, but that's not very usual. Usually, it is four east one or two east one with a fixed rate of seventy five or one hundred fifty. Okay, we'll go to the next one.
Okay. Diagnosis. This is not difficult. Anybody? Anybody can uh, 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 discuss. Anybody? I think somebody should volunteer. Go try. Yes, a 12 lead electrocardiogram. Oh. Uh, standardization. It is. Uh, yes, sir. Normal standardization. Okay. So, heart rate around 100 per minute. Eh? Heart rate around 100. There's some difficulty in. Uh, yes, sir. That. I think uh, it is around 100, sir, around 90 to 100. No, no, no. 150 at least. 150. It's 150. Okay. It's, uh, it is 150 because the, uh, the lines on the ECG paper is not very clear. Mm -hmm. So, but I am telling you the rate is 150. Okay, right, yes. Then first DD is uh, better with 2 is to 1. Yes, whenever you get a heart rate 150, carefully look for? Uh, inverted P wave, flutter waves. Flutter waves, okay. In flutter waves, which is inverted, is it the, uh, the, the P wave or the P, uh, T wave? P inverted P... P wave side. Hmm? Is it a uh, repolarization, depolarization wave or a repolarization wave? Which one is positive? Which one is negative? Sir, repolarization will be negative, sir. Hmm? Repolarization they will be negative. Sir. Repolarization is negative, and uh, uh, depolarization is. Sir, uh, here uh, which one? Sir, we are seeing in the B one. So we can see the uh, two P, uh, P waves, but the, the repolarization is negative, sir. Uh, what is the uh, pathway taken by the uh, uh, repolarization? Uh, once there is a reentry circuit, how is the atrium depolarized? Is it uh, atrium is depolarized from uh, above downwards or uh, uh, below upwards? From below upwards. Sir. Oh, so when it is depolarized from below upwards, you expect the uh, wave in lead to three wave to be positive or negative? Negative. Sir. Negative. negative. But the P waves to be negative. Yes. The, the depolarization wave, we cannot use the word P wave, it's a flutter wave. The depolarization flutter wave is negative and repolarization flutter wave is positive. So the repolar depolar the, from the from near the AV junction, the depolarization process goes up, that will negative produce a negative wave, and when it comes back. It becomes a positive wave. So depolarization is positive, you know, negative, and the repolarization is positive. Okay. So, uh, 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 do you th do you think that what may be the cause? This patient is having some more abnormality. Ischemic. Um, what did you say? It's ischemic. Why did you say it's ischemic? Uh, <laughs> In V1, sir. Eh? So, lead V1 uh, and yes. AVR both are showing ST elevation, sir. Okay, there's V1, some V2, V2, and AVR. Oh, there's some minor ST elevation in V1, and uh, oh, probably V2. there's a doubtful ST elevation in AVR. And, sir, flat ST depression in the lateral leads, sir. Okay. Mm. So, with so much of tachycardia, ST elevation, uh, I will. Because if heart rate is more than around 150, ST elevation and depression, I will not. 
Well, actually, uh, see, you, it is not a very classical ST elevation that we are yes, in the AVR and V1. And, uh, and moreover, uh, sir, because of the presence of another P wave, it is giving this elevation. Yes, yes. So, I am not saying so it is. See, atrial uh, flutter in a patient who has got a right axis deviation, you are getting an RSR dash pattern. Uh, do you think that uh, you would like to think of a, a positive diagnosis also? This was a case of actually ASD. Patient with ASD uh, who presented with atrial flutter. So we had a right axis deviation. There was some uh, terminal R waves in V1 and also had two east one uh, atrial flutter. Uh, it was a case of ASD. Or it can be post-op also, sir. We can say post-op congenital heart disease. Yes, yes. Post-op congenital heart disease. Then you will have uh, usually uh, uh, post-op usually more often you get atrial fibrillation than flutter. Many often you get uh, atrial fibrillation in the immediate post-operative period and uh, you can get atrial uh, and uh, rather than atrial flutter. They both can happen. And second is that whenever there is a congenital heart disease is operated, when you see an abnormality, more often you get a bundle branch block with the left axis deviation. That's the usual pattern. Here it is more of a uh, narrow QRS complex, a relatively narrow QRS complex, right axis deviation, and then it's an RSR dash pattern in V1. All put together uh, a possibility of uh, uh, some uh, uh, some right axis, right to the hypertrophy pattern, and that may, uh, 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 with the atrial flutter, a possibility of AST can be thought of. Uh, you cannot make a diagnosis, definitely. That is not possible. But uh, when you are asked to give an opinion, then you can think that there is right axis deviation all put together. A possibility of uh, 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 atrial septal defect with the atrial flutter can be thought of. Yes, a post op surgical post operative ASD closure, sir. Because of the scar, sir, there is a chance that yes, we can get a flutter. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I agree with you. Correct. Sir, would you like to try? You yes, sir. Try. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, mm. uh, sir. Sir, finally, DCG, the mm. standardization is normal. Mm. So the axis are, uh, it is left axis, sir. Uh, okay. And sir, QRS is widened. Sir, okay. I can see the two P, P, P waves. One at the terminal part of the QRS and another is sir, uh, just before the, uh, sir, but, but that I a little doubt, sir. I have to confirm it. Whether mm. uh, the P waves uh, in the, uh, just the terminal part of the QRS present or not. And sir, there is a, uh, Sir, pre oh, no, 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 low voltage complex in chest leads. Uh, low voltage complex in yes, sir. Low voltage complex in chest leads. We can say, sir, less than ten mm in chest leads. All right. <laughs> is it low voltage or is the patient is having? No, 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 no. There is a lead two, lead three is quite significant. Uh, lead, tall chest, chest lead, me care, ma'am. Chest lead, lead three. Ha, lead three. Thank you, no. Lead three, it is more than 15. No, no, no. But, uh... Uh, no, no, no. Uh, limb leads, there is no evidence of any low voltage. But uh, if you look at the chest leads, only chest leads. leads. Okay. But, yes, but, but, uh, yes, but uh, you, 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 the lack of voltage may be because the myocardium is destroyed also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can or see the okay. failure of progression of the R way from V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. Almost V5, V4, it is almost a Q wave. Q -R, Q -R, with uh, some ST elevation and T wave inversion. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, then, sir, in the lead V1, sir, there is a prominent R wave. Yes. Uh, so, sir, I have to think uh, that uh, whether patient has got a posterior wall MI or not. One. And, uh, sir, uh, uh, there is a le uh, complete left bundle branch block. Yes. With left axis deviation. Mm. With, uh, sir, uh, uh, whether, sir, uh, P waves, two P waves are there or not. Little confusion is there. And mm. sir, uh, in case I think of, you are right, there are two P waves, uh, one yeah. P waves uh, 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 or here, and uh, it's, uh, okay. and sir, Point. presence of Q waves in pre uh, in presence of complete left bundle branch block, so mm. suggests that it is a sir myocardial infarction. Very good. How will you diagnose uh, uh, the previous myocardial infarction, or even uh, what are the points by which you diagnose acute myocardial infarction in presence of left bundle branch block? Sir, and I how will you diagnose? 
However, what are the indicators of a previous myocardial infarction in presence of left ventral vascular? Sir, Garbosa criteria. Okay. Sir, in which sir, there are uh, sir uh, 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 positive uh, points are there. Sir, if suppose it, it is in the uh, concordance uh, limb. Uh, mm -hmm. leads uh, in which we are seeing the Q and ST elevation. If concordance, only one ST elevation will be enough uh, to give a point of uh, sir, three. Whereas, sir, if discordance, then sir, ST elevation five mm. Uh, 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 that will give point of uh, uh, two. Just, just a minute, just a minute. Uh, yes, Hello? Good evening. Ah. 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 Are you serious, ma'am? Yes. Lead V1 positive with LBP. How do you get it? V1 with LBP. Look, LBP is the truest one, right? Take me. Ah. Ah. Right. So, LBP, how are you talking about? LBP, lead 1 with LBP. Yes, lead 1. V5-6. V5-6. But in V1, if QRS is also in V1, it's not wide. No, it's not QRS. It's like ST. Look, it's QRS. A1 is in the same part. Yes, yes. Sir, look, it's not wide. Sir, it's 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 wide. No, no, it's not necessary. It's correct that there is a prominent RR in the weaver. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Seventy-five milligrams per hour. QS आना चाहिए ना? हाँ, वही मैं कह रहा हूँ complete LBV बना रहे हैं तो QS आएगा ना? या तो फिर ये lead पहले ले लिया है, ये हो सकता है, ज़्यादा anterior ले लिया है इसमें, ऊपर का। ये हो सकता है, lead placement में ऊपर नीचे हो गया होगा। हाँ, that's fine, no problem। तब से पूछते हैं। ंगीम And the, what about that uh, lady we had admitted on uh, on uh, Thursday? One lady was. Ah, oh, yes. We do an angiogram on her, then decide what is to be done. Okay. Oh. Okay. 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 Okay, fine. Okay, great. Okay. So we will we'll try to start uh, sharp 9.30 because at 9.30 the, uh, uh, the IOS people will come. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, uh, I have to. Okay, right. Yeah. Well, where we where did we leave? Uh, so we have found that the patient is a two-inch one. We are asking a question. 
What are diagnosis of MI in presence of LBB? Yeah, well, we, uh, diagnosis of acute uh, acute MI in presence of LBB yeah. and diagnosis of uh, uh, pre uh, previous myocardial infarction and uh, uh, in, in in presence of LBB. Yeah. So in presence of LBB, what is the uh, uh, ECG criteria to diagnose acute myocardial infarction? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so concordance and the discordance uh, uh, ST elevation. Oh. Sir, in K, uh, if it is concordance, one number, it will give, uh, sir. No, you have what? to be clear which lead and uh, which lead are you seeing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In V1, I have to uh, read V1, V2. Sir, oh. if ST elevation uh, oh. in presence of LBB. In presence of LBB, if there is ST elevation in V1 and V2. How no, much? no, sir. No, sir. V5 and V6, it will be 1 mm and V1, V2, it will be, sir, 5 mm. Okay, more than five. Okay. More than five, yeah. Yeah. If and there is an if there is a concordant ST elevation in V5 and V6 of equal to or more than one mm, yeah. or a discordant ST elevation of more than five millimeters in V1 and V2. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, we discordant, yes. Uh, what are the how much is what is the point point score? Sir, points are uh, 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 one sir in left LBB with uh, V5, V6, sir, it will carry. Uh, sir, I think five point. Okay. Uh, five point. Whereas uh, this will carry only two point. Okay. The V1 and V2. Okay. ST elevation. Oh, and okay. one more criteria is, sir, uh, in, uh, sir, in case of V3, mm. uh, sir, S5, uh, um, th uh, the third one I have forgotten, sir. Mm. So, uh, mm. T point or two point, sir? Uh. Uh, sir, if concordant ST uh, elevation oh. uh, uh, in V5, V6, uh, then I think it is five points, sir. Okay. Uh, if uh, there is a discordant ST elevation uh, more than five mm, then that is a one point. Oh, okay. And if uh, concordant ST depression in V1, V2, I think that is three points, sir. Okay, uh, you're right. Only thing is that um, the, the concordant, uh, discordant ST elevation even in V1 and V2 of equal to or more than five, two points. Okay, sir. And for a discordant ST, concordant ST depression in V1 and V2 equal to or more than one millimeter is three points. Yes, sir. And okay. uh, 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 concordant ST elevation in V5 and V6 equal to or more than one millimeter is uh, Five points. That's your right. Then, what? How many points should be there to diagnose? Uh, five points. Uh, five points. Uh, three. Three, three points. points. Not no, five no. points. Five points. Three 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 points. Because uh, five points will be difficult because uh, the second and third criteria cannot coexist. Because sir, one doubt here, sir. Sir, one doubt here. Sir, but in we, 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 V2 and V3, in V2 and V3, if there is ST elevation, you cannot, you cannot have ST depression. So you cannot have a, a, a the second. Ma'am, here is one criteria, right? V5, V6, ST elevation, and something else. Yes, yes. Sir, the sound is going on? Sir, the sound is going on. Yes, sir. Right. And I don't think it's like V1, if it's so positive, how do you say LBB? Yes, sir. It's a little bit of a doubt. Yes, it's a little bit of a doubt. If it's so big, how do you say LBB? Yes. Is the class closed? Sir, light to light. Sir, light to light. नहीं नहीं और ST elevation one ABL भी है यार निखिल one ML one ABL और B five B six है ना 
हाँ जिसमें पॉजिटिव रहेगा उस सब में लीड मारा वन ए बी और वी फाइव वी फोर और डिस्कॉर्डेंट वी टू वी थ्री है मैम वी वन नहीं है कहीं भी वी टू वी थ्री है डिस्कॉर्डेंट और एस टी डिप्रेशन भी वी टू वी थ्री है जहाँ तक मेरे को याद आ रहा है निखिल I think V1 to V3 तीनों इसमें negative है वो तीनों इसमें शायद से confirm नहीं पता मुझे लग रहा है तीनों है क्योंकि V1 तो वैसे क्यों है सर हाँ दरुस सर ये doctor is just joining कुछ electricity का ही है तो वो जस्ट हाँ 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 ये V1 to V1 V3 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 है, okay? मैम तेरा ग्रुप पे डालियो सात दो साल का कैटी जा फोटो किसने? आप नया ब्राउन वर्ल्ड का बात किसी से नहीं देखी? अरे मैं मैं एक्चुअली सीसी में हूँ ना मेरे पास अच्छा अच्छा ओके 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 मेरे पास कोई बुक नहीं है अच्छा बता दी बता दी देने उसको ग्रुप ग्रुप पे डाल दीजिए ना फोटो किसी ग्रुप पे डाल डॉक्टर इज ज्वाइन Okay, sorry about that. My electricity there was a there was a electricity failure. Okay. Sir, one doubt here, sir. Uh huh. Sir, lead V one and V two has positive R wave, so L B B B two B. That what I was discussing with uh, that's also because lead V one and V two has positive R wave, so L B B B should have Q S in V one and V two at least. So. No, LBB can have a small or deep S in V1. But here you see, sir, R wave is more positive than S. Yes, yes, sir. Now that is one of the criteria to diagnose uh, uh, previous myocardial infarction. Oh. That's one of the criteria to diagnose previous myocardial infarction in presence of a left front branch block. So this patient uh, uh, or uh, uh, where a uh, Q Q wave is already formed because this patient has got evidence of a already Q wave is formed because you can see that the R wave height is decreasing, decreasing, and then you have got almost a Q wave in V4, and also you can see a ST elevation in V4, V5, V and V6. So there is criteria to diagnose that this patient has got acute uh, myocardial infarction with left front branch block. And on top of that, there is a, a suspicion that already Q is formed, and uh, the presence of R wave in V1 may indicate uh, the possible uh, an R equivalent to a Q wave in the, in the V5 V6. V5 V6 in the regular electrocardiogram. Yes. Do you get usually a Q wave in V5 and V6 in left ventricular branch block? No, sir. No, no. sir. No. So, so this is the older there that indicate older MI. No? Yes. So, yes, so this is older MI. So Q in A will yeah. also. Yeah. There is a the old patient MI. had a old previous myocardial infarction resulted in left front branch block, and also patient has got a new infarction which resulted in the ST elevation in V V three V four V five V six. So what are the points by which you can diagnose the previous myocardial infarction presence of LBB? One is presence of Q wave in V five V six. Are the R wave present? So R wave in V1. What else? One or two more points. Q in one area. Notching of... in. Eh? Sir, notching, notching in V1, sir. Notching of stroke where? R wave. Uh, uh, notching of R wave in uh, uh, one AVL V5 V6 in upstroke of R wave, sir. Very good. Yes. What else? And notching of upstroke of uh, ascending limb of S wave in uh, those with the predominantly negative QRS like V5 uh, V6. Oh, okay. sorry. V1, V2. The V1, V2. Okay, right. V1, V2, V3. Okay, yes. Another criteria is 
uh, in V5 and V6, you can get an R pattern, a terminal wave in, a, in v, v, V5, V6, which is an S wave. That also indicates previous uh, anterior myocardial infarction. Why it is so? Can you explain? Can anyone of you explain it? How can uh -huh. a, a presence of a terminal S wave in V5, V6 indicate uh, previous myocardial infarction? In presence of left mental back block. So this will this is signifying that uh, uh, so the, uh, the the depolarization is very late uh, in. Uh, uh, so in, in, in patients of the left mental back block, usual terminal. RV is due to depolarization of which part of the ventricle? Yes, sir. Uh, sir uh, posterior superior, just near the sir, mitral valve, uh, 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 basal region. No, that's a very small portion, but usually the last part of the ventricular myocardium, which actually generates the RV in patients of uh, left ventricular branch block, a delayed depolarization is the anterolateral part of the uh, the left ventricular myocardium. And if that R wave is not there and is replaced by Q wave, that obviously means that that area is fibrous and usually indicates uh, the pre existing or previous anterolateral myocardial infarction. So, in patients with uh, LVVB, if there is a terminal S wave instead of an R wave, that also usually indicates that the patient has got an associated uh, 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 infarction and the anterolateral wall is uh, probably fibrotic. But you should be careful that uh, uh, some of these patients with LBBB can have a, a large heart. And in that situation, you should always take V7, V8 before you conclude that the terminal S wave is due to fibrosed anterolateral wall. So there are multiple points by which you can diagnose pre existing uh, in, infarction in a patient with left bundle back block. So that you should know. And three criteria are there to diagnose presence of or acute. Uh, myocardial infarction in a patient with left front back block. They are one, uh, the concordant ST elevation in V5 and V6, uh, concordant ST depression in uh, V1 and V2, one, uh, one, uh, both one millimeter or more, and concordant uh, discordant ST elevation equal to or more than five millimeters in V1 and V2. Oh, these are the three criteria, and scores are given for this criteria. The, uh, the criteria for uh, the, the V5 and V6, where there is a concordant ST elevation of equal to or more than one millimeter, has got five points. The patient with a concordant ST depression in V2-V3 has got three points. Uh, the, the discordant ST elevation in, and V1 and V2 has got uh, three, uh, two points. V1 and V2, uh, the concordant ST depression has got three points. Uh, discordant ST elevation in V1, V1 and V2 has got two points. And you require the five points to diagnose uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, presence of myocardial infarction in a patient with left bundle branch block. You have to, uh, 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 sir, five or three, sir? Uh, I think it's three, I think, not five. I'm sorry about that. It's three points. Hmm. Okay, we'll go to the next one. What does it show? First you look at the 12 liter electrocardiogram and then you look at the rhythm strip. I'll give you a clue. The main abnormality is you are seeing a, a, PVS, PVS. a, a small wave here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, have to PVS. Say, you have to tell me what it is and uh, what is the interpretation. 
Is it a normal sinus P wave or abnormal P wave? Abnormal P wave, sir. Abnormal P wave. So, so what is happening to that P wave? Sir, in the rhythm strip, sir, first we can see that there is a very short PR interval first. Yes. And after that, sir, the uh, the P waves which are seen at the end of the ST segment. Yes. So, sir, uh, uh, this P wave normal, is not are conducted. Are no. the normal P waves? No, sir. Negative. Sir, no, sir. No, sir. They are. Uh, uh, negative P waves. Sir. Yes. So do, do you think that really there is a short PR interval? Because they see the, 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 the second strip, I think it is at a, at a slower In speed. the first one, it is not there, sir. The ah, first one PR is normal. Yes, Whereas sir. the same same P waves also seen there also, sir. Yes. The second yes. P waves also. Okay. Here you can see the lines very well and you can see yeah. that. Uh, oh, okay, uh, sir. Uh, so, sir, here uh, uh, one of the P wave is not conducted, sir. The second yes. P waves are not conducted, sir. Yes, they are known as, they are known as blocked atrial. Uh, 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 they are known as blocked atrial ectopics. Yes, because uh, they are actually there are abnormal P waves, ectopic P waves, which yes. has occurred so early, so uh, so that at the, when they you know, when they reach the uh, the AV AV junction, already that re region is still refractory. And they do not uh, conduct to the ventricles, giving rise to a blocked atrial ectopics. And what what can what what can the blocked atrial ectopics do to the sinus node? Uh, sir, it can reset. Yeah, it, it can goes. reset. It depolarizes the sinus node and it resets the sinus node. So that is what is happening. So when it resets the sinus node, there can be a delay. So there can be a, 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 a there can be a delay in the next sinus beat. And that can result in a slightly longer uh, RR interval. So this is a, uh, you, do you think that this patient has got any other abnormality? Do you think that there is a... Uh, prolonged, uh, sir, prolonged QT, sir. Yeah, prolonged QT and also all the QT... U waves, ST, sir. ST segment is significantly prolonged. Yeah. What is the reason for this ST prolongation? QT is prolonged of which ST is also significant prolongation. Yeah, so this will be... Um, uh, Prolonged QT syndrome of type uh, where, sir? Sir, uh, digoxin. No, digoxin will not give rise to. Uh, what are the conditions in which you can get ST? What is the normal uh, duration of the ST segment? The normal 330 to 450 milliseconds. Eh? Uh, 3, 330 to 450 milliseconds. Millisecond. No, no, I am asking the question of ST segment only, not QT interval. What is the duration of the ST segment, normal ST segment? What is the duration of the normal ST segment? When will you call it, it is prolonged? Mm. So from the Q, uh, QT, if we deduct the uh, QRS duration, uh, that QRS duration usually is less than uh, normal is 80 to 100 millisecond. So, so uh, will it be around 250 millisecond? ST For ST segment? No, no, QT yes, interval has not only ST segment, it has got QRS and T wave also. Okay, sir. Oh, QT, right. segment is, QT interval is from the beginning of the Q wave to the end of the T wave. Okay, only ST segments, sir, you are yeah. I'm asking a question, what is the duration of ST segment and what, what is the commonest cause for ST segment uh, prolongation? 80 to 130. 80 to 130. Not, not absolutely correct, but you are near about correct. Which is 50 to 150. So it, the duration of the ST segment is 50 milliseconds to 150 milliseconds. So, if the ST segment is uh, more than four small squares, it means that it is prolonged. So, uh, uh, when you find that the ST segment is uh, uh, flat ST segment and it is prolonged beyond uh, uh, four uh, equal to or more than four, that qualifies for a prolonged ST segment. And what, the most important reason for ST prolongation is? Ischemia, sir. Ischemia. Ischemia. Ischemia is the commonest cause. Any other? Hypokalemia? Hypokalemia, not hypokalemia. 
ഹൈപ്പോകാൽസീമിയ <laughs> so this was a case of uh, case with uh, atrial ectopics blocked atrial ectopics patient has st flat st segment and uh, st was more than 150 it was actually 200 and he had hypocalcemia right so whenever you have got a, a st prolongation always think of ischemia ischemia is the first and the most important cause then that is followed by hypocalcemia and hypokalemia okay okay next okay. just this probably you might have seen previously it does not matter those who have not seen can stay take the challenge so obviously you are seeing lot of uh, uh, white shadows on both sides of the both lung fields so obviously that is an acute pulmonary edema sir back swing appearance but sir there is a sir uh, valve is also seen mitral valve sir yes. or, or sir so the position so i think mitral valve only yes how will you diagnose uh, how will you make out whether it is a mitral valve or not uh, sir from the uh, uh, hilum to the costophrenic angle uh-huh. if we draw a line then it will be sir below or up So yes. if it is up, then it is either pulmonary or aortic, and if it is below, then it is tricuspid or mitral. Yes, you would draw a line from the uh, right costophrenic angle, sorry, uh, from the right uh, cardiophrenic angle to the lower part of the pulmonary artery segment, and find the point where it cuts the uh, lateral border of the left, uh, the left lateral border of the spine, and below and uh, lateral. will be the mitral valve and above medial above and medial will be the aortic valve the mitral tricuspid valve will be slightly lower so yes. in this line the one which is below as the, at the point where it cuts the lateral sternal border here it cuts the if we if you draw a line from here the draw a line from here up to the lower part of the pulmonary pulmonary segment somewhere here it cuts here and the valve uh, mitral valve will be below and slightly lateral and one which is above and medial will be aortic valve aortic valve will, uh, will be mostly superimposed on the spine in a pa view if you are if you want to see the aortic valve okay. what is the best view what is the best view to look at the aortic valve the lateral view that's the view that view is the best view to look at the aortic valve in uh, in natural view where will be the aortic valve yes sir uh, uh, in the lateral view sir we will uh, divide it into three segments sir oh. anterior middle and posterior mm. uh, sir so uh, if it is sir anterior uh, uh, then it will be sir uh, pulmonary mm. uh, middle and posterior uh, sir middle will be aortic and uh, mm. posterior will be mitral okay actually uh, you, you, you you don't have to do any of these things uh, you, you draw a line from the uh, from the, uh, the the lower part of the sternum to the hilum of the lung in the lateral you can see the hilum as well as the lower part of the sternum where it meets the meets the, uh, the the diaphragm so you draw the line from the uh, from the sternum diaphragmatic junction to the the hilum of the lung the mitral valve will be the aortic valve will be in the center of the uh, lateral uh, the cardiac shadow it will be exactly in the center and uh, as you are rightly said in the if you draw this line in the middle will be the aortic valve just below will be the mitral valve and just above will be the pulmonary valve you are right but the uh, you need not worry uh, you look at the cardiac sillet and the valve which is in the center part of the cardiac sillet will be the aortic valve so the more towards the posterior part will be the mitral valve and more anterior and above will be the pulmonary valve so 
by looking at the lateral view, you are able to make out the pulmonary the aortic valve very well. So here, uh, so what is the cause of this pulmonary edema? The stuck mitral valve. Stuck mitral valve. Most likely due to. Sir, with the patient has not taken the uh, anticoagulation. Yes. The patient, patient uh, uh, missed the anticoagulation and uh, uh, the, uh, the problem was secondary to a thrombus formation. What will be the management? Sir, uh, uh, this is sir, such a... Sir, uh, uh, this case, surgery has to be done, sir. Yes. Surgery is the most ideal treatment. Yes, sir. Uh, but, if the surgery is not possible because uh, the surgeon is not, not taking over the case, the patient is in hypotension, patient is in very bad shape, what will you do? Then, sir, we have to thrombolyze patient. Yes, thrombolyze. What is the problem of thrombolysis? Sir, the embolism, uh, cerebral yes. embolism. Yes, so there is a, a percentage of patients can have a developed a cerebral embolism because when you give thrombolytic therapy, the clot may be lysed partially and some of the clots may get dislodged. They may go and cause massive cerebral embolism. And this patient had cerebral embolism. When uh, we give thrombolytic therapy, the patient recovered very well and the patient went in for uh, acute uh, uh, hemiplegia, a massive hemiplegia and from which we could not save it. Okay, so and now you see, uh, can you tell me a few conditions where situations where the heart can remain small and can have pulmonary edema? Heart is small, small. Only mitral edema. stenosis, sir. Mitral stenosis, very good. Well, in mitral stenosis, when they develop pulmonary edema, acute pulmonary edema. Yeah. The, the, the event which produces the pulmonary edema most of those, in most of those situations. So, uh, usually, it's a ball ball thrombus. All right, bone valve thrombus. Before that, when the patient develops atrial fibrillation, uh, patients with mitral stenosis, severe mitral stenosis, when they develop atrial fibrillation, they very often can go for acute pulmonary edema. Why? Uh, is it what? What question, sir? Uh, in patients with mitral stenosis, yeah. when they develop atrial fibrillation, there is a risk that the patient can go for acute pulmonary edema. Why do they develop acute pulmonary edema when they go in for atrial fibrillation? Because sir, the, the left atrial kick has gone, sir, so the blood will not flow from the LA to LV. As no, a result, no, no. sir, LA blood will flow, flow but the but atrial support won't be there. Okay, no, one uh, lack of atrial support. One, two, more important than that. What happens to the heart rate when the patient? Sir, uh, tachycardia, sir, diastole will decrease. Yes, sir. When there is a tachycardia, what is the problem in a patient with mitral stenosis? Sir, uh, the LV feeling is during the diastole. Yeah. The diastole is shortened. Yes. Whenever there is tachycardia, the diastole is shortened, the value feeling comes down, and that will result in what, what will happen to the left atrial pressure? Sir, it will increase, sir. So, pulmonary will increase because, of the, because of the residual uh, blood volume in the left atrium, the left atrial pressure will rise, and that will result in acute pulmonary edema. So, patients with mitral stenosis, when they develop atrial fibrillation, that is the time when they develop acute pulmonary edema. And sometimes patients with mitral stenosis can have a normal sized heart and can go in for acute pulmonary edema. Clue for the diagnosis of mitral stenosis would be we can see the pulmonary atrial segment is prominent and left atrial appendage also will be prominent in these patients. Okay, one, uh, mitral stenosis. Another uh, one or two conditions more. Sir, acute MR. Sir. MR. Acute? Acute MR. Acute MR. You know, sometimes in acute MR, yes, uh, but of course, usually the acute MR mostly occurs. In what other situations you can get acute MR? Infective endocarditis. Infective endocarditis. In the, uh, acute trauma. MI. Acute MI. Yeah, uh, sir, sometimes uh, itro, uh, itrogenic. Sir. Yes, itrogenic. What is it? Uh, sir, uh, uh, like, Renal artery stenosis, uh, what uh, hmm? flash pulmonary edema? Sir? Yeah, that's right. Now, before that, uh, question is uh, what are the conditions you can get acute mitral regurgitation? You have already mentioned it too. Uh, trauma, sir, sir. Yeah. So, other is uh, uh, trauma. Trauma can also sometimes uh, there can be mitral valve avulsion, mitral valve damage that can result in mitral, acute mitral regurgitation. Okay. And, sir, degenerative mitral valve, like mitral valve prolapse. Uh, 
but you need caudal rupture yes i agree with yes, you caudal rupture or associated with mitral valve prolapse you can get caudal rupture or sometimes you can get a partial rupture of the valve muscle they can have acute mitral regurgitation and then is in the cath lab why did you forget about that in the cath lab yes, patients sir, they yeah. have to go the balloon mitral valve plastic sir, with well or plastic they can develop acute mitral regurgitation and similarly when if it is not being done now previously when the surgeon used to do close to mitral valvotomy sometimes the patients can go for acute mitral regurgitation so this are the few situations where there can be acute mitral regurgitation and if it is a real acute mitral regurgitation the heart may not be large and you may get a normal sized heart what a few more conditions where there can be a normal sized heart acute pulmonary edema you somebody has said about flash pulmonary edema what are the causes uh renal artery stenosis sir yes renal artery stenosis sometimes there can be an acute rise in blood pressure and that may give rise to an acute pulmonary edema yes acute ar also sir acute, acute ar yes acute ar can give rise to acute pulmonary edema acute myocardial infarction acute, my, uh, acute ischemia sometimes ischemia Excuse induced me. acute uh, 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 sometimes patients can go, go for acute pulmonary edema, especially uh, ischemia-induced uh, uh, LV, LV dysfunction. And if it is mostly uh, diastolic dysfunction, they can result in acute pulmonary edema. Sometimes the heart may not be large. So these are the few situations where the heart size may and not be large. And for HCM patients, sir, young HCM patient going for failure, sir, they can also have a small heart with. Uh... Why should they go for acute pulmonary edema? HCM with first episode of AF. Can... Well, usually they develop a single. That's usual pattern. When there is a, a AF in a patient with the HCM, there is a significant drop in the cardiac output. But they go for single. That's usual pattern. But Sam can acute MR if uh, Sam. Uh... Sam cannot give us acute MR. The patients can have MR, but not acute MR. Usually, uh, moreover, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy has got some degree of cardiac enlargement. Most of the patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy will have some degree of cardiac enlargement. And acute pulmonary edema is not a usual feature. Uh, very often, in a patient who develops atrial fibrillation, in a patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, usually presentation is single. Yes, sir. Okay, I will go to the next case. डिटरेटर okay the the uh, diagnosis a severe aortic stenosis sir aortic stenosis yes severe is aortic stenosis there we can see pulses parvus and tardus in the that eh yeah, pulses parvus tardus you can see but you no, sir this is late late picking late picking sir slow rise late picking pulse in uh, that uh, Slow rise, late picking pulse with the gradient is there, sir. How can you say pulse here? You are saying uh, only the pressure tracing. Uh, slow rise and late picking. Any other opinion? Sir, here we are seeing the gradient between the left ventricle and the aorta, sir. Okay. So, sir, uh, in the uh, sir uh, uh, here we are seeing that. Uh, Uh, so there is a gradual uh, uh, increased and after that sir it is sustained also so mm. so sir uh, this is a uh, sir uh, i think sir this will be um, uh, dynamic obstruction hmm why did you say dynamic obstruction um, so um, uh, uh, because sir there is a uh, 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 There is a drop. Uh, uh, the gradient, sir, gradient has decreased. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 sir. No, sir. It is. <laughs> no, no, sir. No, sir. Sir, it is. Uh, uh, sir, the gradient bit uh, gradient gradually increased and sustained, sir. The gradient, sir. Gradient uh, gradually increased and sustained. What do you mean by that? Sir, 
So there is a gradient between the left ventricle and the aorta. Okay, that's a grade. Okay, sir. So I am asking right question right whether right. it is a dynamic obstruction or a fixed obstruction. Sir, it is a fixed obstruction, sir. Okay. So you are saying it's fixed. Previously you said dynamic obstruction. No, yes, sir. I was wrong, sir. Okay, okay. Anybody else who has got any other opinion? Anybody would and like sir, to... And sir, LA pressure is also rise. Yes, there is an LA pressure rise. Very uh, good. Sir. Uh, as a prominent view, yeah? Yeah. Anybody who is going to disagree and would like to say that this is dynamic obstruction? How will you make you differentiate between dynamic obstruction and fixed obstruction? Anybody? Gavro, why can't you try? Sir, uh, is it a spike and dome or you can say or... Anybody, anybody who is doing work in the cath lab, have you, how will you, from the pressure data, pressure tracing, how will you say there is dynamic obstruction or a fixed obstruction? So, so this is, uh, yes. Dynamic will increase. Uh, uh, so, fixed will have the... In dynamic obstruction, is there a, uh, in the beginning of the systole, is there an obstruction? No, sir. Dynamic in the beginning, it will not be have the, any obstruction, sir. Okay. So, any there is no obstruction. So, if there is no obstruction, what will, how will the aortic pressure rise along with the LV pressure? After the ejection time. Not ejection. In the initial phase, you said that there is no obstruction in a dynamic obstruction. So what will happen to the aortic pressure and LV pressure? Will they rise simultaneously? Both will increase simultaneously. Sir. Yes, sir. Simultaneously, yes, sir. So that's what you are seeing here. See, the yes, pressure sir. is rising simultaneously. And after that, suddenly there is a obstruction and it has become a gradient between the LV pressure and the aortic pressure. So what is this? Is it a fixed obstruction or a dynamic obstruction? So dynamic dynamic uh, obstruction. Dynamic obstruction. Initially, there is no obstruction, and there is an obstruction here. And there is this is associated with a prominent V wave. So most likely, patient is having associated mitral MR mitral regurgitation. Okay. MR. Uh, sir. That, that uh, spike and dome, we can say there, sir, or it is better not to comment on that. Uh... Spike and dome. Well, you're saying about spike and dome. You can. Actually, spike and dome is mostly in the pulse spacing. How can you uh, hear? Well, you can say that sometimes you will be able to see if there is a sudden rise in the uh, pressure. There is a dome here. I don't know whether you can call it a spike and dome. Spike and dome is mostly HCM pulse spacing. Initially, there is a rise. They can, this can be called as a spike. And there is a dome here. If you use the word, then you have to explain saying that Initial rise along with the LV is considered as a spike and then is followed by a, a, an obstruction, which is the dome. You can explain it. And you can hear the uh, mitral, mitral regurgitation, which is given by the prominent view. Yes. Okay. Right. We'll go to the next one. Yes. Okay. What is this? The mitral valve prolapses with vegetation hmm. or sir, ruptured cordy. Okay, yeah, very good. Well, this, was actually, this was actually a case of ruptured cordy in a patient with acute myocardial infarction. You can see actually uh, something is attached to the anterior mitral leaflet. Anterior, anterior, anterior mitral leaflet. You can see that the patient has got um, mitral regurgitation with a normal sized LV and also normal sized LA. Indicating that this is an acute mitral regurgitation. You can see the the, the, the attached uh, fragment of the uh, ruptured, uh, uh, partially ruptured papillary muscle. Yes? Sir, the T we have to do no, sir, before confirmation. T has to be. The patient had acute myocardial infarction. On the first day, he did not have the, he, uh, there was nothing special. On the second day, suddenly deteriorated. So he was actually referred from another center. The patient was admitted in another center. On the first day, he was fine. 
on the second day he suddenly there by acute pulmonary edema and was referred to ourselves and when we did the echo uh, uh, we found that there this was the picture patient did not have any marmon at all that's a usual pattern in patient oh, with acute uh, uh, papillary muscle rupture and acute mitral regurgitation there may not be any marmon whenever you are hearing a murmur it is more likely to be vsd rather than uh, an mitral acute mitral regurgitation so whenever you are hearing a murmur you consider papillary muscle uh, uh, ventricular septal rupture and we are not hearing a murmur and the patient there is acute pulmonary edema and you are hearing you are seeing mitral regurgitation consider papillary muscle rupture so this was a case of papillary muscle rupture in a patient with uh, acute myocardial infarction with acute mitral regurgitation Okay, good, good, uh, Saroj, very good. You made it out very well. Okay, this is simple. There is no problem. Cardiac tamponade. Cardiac tamponade. What uh, are what are the echocardiographic uh, criteria of cardiac tamponade? Now I think uh, Saroj should keep quiet because I think uh, you should give opportunity for others also to uh, come into discussion. But this you can discuss. Uh, tell me what uh, what are the echocardiographic features of cardiac tamponade? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, in the two uh, uh, D M mode, sir, we have to see the R V collapse, free wall collapse. Oh. Ah. And when 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 you see the when, in which phase of cardiac yes, cycle sir. you see the R V collapse, systole or diastole? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir, R V and R V they are uh, just uh, different, sir. In case of uh, uh, R A, it will be sir during systole, and whereas in case of R V, I think it will be during diastole, sir. Are you sure, or you want to modify? No, uh, no sir. Yes, sir. Uh, one minute, sir. Mm. So feeling will be that too. Uh, sir, R V free wall collapse. Sir, yes, sir. R V will be systole, and uh, R A will be diastole. Sir, I am confused. In, uh, you should uh, always think of the hemodynamics. When the L V L V uh, and when, they, when uh, during systole, what happens to the pericardial pressure in cardiac in cardiac terminate? Uh, uh, during systole, uh, oh. it will decrease, sir. Decrease? Why? Sir, because sir, it is getting more space. Eh? Sir, during systole, the oh. pericardial pressure will decrease. Oh, why? Because sir, uh, the uh, uh, the pressure, intracavitary pressure will increase and pericardial pressure will decrease. Oh, I am asking why it decreases. Sir, the volume is constant, but uh, due to contraction of the uh, LV, there is more space to accommodate to the pericardial fluid. So, very good, decrease. very good. Because when the LV contracts and and LV and RV contracts, it pumps the blood out. The uh, the volume of the heart comes down. The heart volume comes down. So there is more space in the pericardium, and the pericardial pressure falls. So, if the pericardial pressure falls, will the atrium be collapsing or ventricle be collapsing at that pace? Atrium will be collapsing. Why? In the, when the pressure no. in the pericardium is coming down, why should it collapse? Uh, no, sir. It will uh, diastolic collapse will be there, sir. Only. Yeah. So in when, which phase of cardiac cycle does the atrium collapse? When in which phase of cardiac cycle does the ventricle collapse? Sir, so RV when, will, RV will collapse during diastole. Yes, LV R A. Early diastole. RA RA in sir system. No, no. Why should no. it? Why should it uh, collapse in systole? Because in systole the pericardial pressure is uh, definitely lower than during diastole. And why should the atrium collapse? And what happens to the atrial pressure during systole? It increases. Decreases. Minus return increases and the pericardial pressure drops. So can you get a collapse during systole? Atrial collapse. No, sir. Because uh, see, in uh, during systole the pericardial pressure drops. And the atrial pressure goes up. So can the atrium collapse? No, sir. Atrium will collapse only during both ventricle and the atrium will collapse during diastole. But ventricle will collapse during early diastole. Atrium will collapse in the late diastole. Late diastole. Why it is in late diastole? Yeah. So the, because sir, the venous return has come to the. Uh, L in late diastole, what happens to the late diastole? It will function as a conduit on this, sir. Yeah, that's why no pressure will the, be low. The collapse yes, is depending upon the pressure pattern. So, in late diastole, what happens to the pericardial pressure? Uh, it will increase, sir. It will increase, and what will happen to the atrial pressure? 
it can even become come down because the blood is going into the into the into the ventricle ventricle so the atrial pressure can come down especially when there is a, a significant wide descent and uh, wide descent is not a feature of uh, uh, constrictive uh, the, uh, the pericardial effusion but the pericardial pressure definitely will increase and that will result in atrial collapse of these two findings one early diast uh, rv collapse or late atrial collapse which one is uh, more uh, uh, specific and more uh, sensitive what which one has got more sensitivity and which one has got more specificity the specificity is rv collapse okay rv collapse sensitive yes rv collapse most so, rv collapse is for sensitivity is high for yes. rv collapse and specificity is high for rv collapse. collapse okay very good excellent yes okay so here these are all uh, the venous tracings i will you somebody should interpret uh, how will you make use of this uh, findings to uh, to make out the right atrial pressure or Uh, tracings of different patients uh oh. sir if ivc diameter more than 2. Point, uh, more than 2.1 cm mm. and uh, it is uh, less than 50% uh, no sir if it is uh, diameter is less than 2.1 cm mm. and if it is more than 50% collapsing Then when, uh, three when, millimeter. When? Ah, uh, what sir? When is the more than fifty percent collapse? Sniff. It's sniffing. Sniffing. When is there okay. sniffing? More than fifty percent collapse. And normal breathing? Twenty percent. Yes, equal to or 20%. more than twenty percent collapse. That will be considered as normal. Ah, uh, pressure right, around three mm. Yes, sir. Around five. You can put three to zero five. to five. Right, right, normal right atrial pressure three to five. Okay, right. Whenever there is a total collapse here, you can in both uh, this uh, second and third one, you can see there is a uh, here and third one is almost totally collapsing. So, what is the what will be the uh, pressure in these patients? Right atrial pressure. In third one, it is around uh, normal pressure, sir. Three uh, three to five mm j. No, no. Here it is normal. The first one. first one okay this one is normal pressure because this patient has got actually uh, there some you can see some collapse here in between yes sir so we are very careful the patient is normal breathing normal size uh, ivc this is about 3 to 5 and these two have got a significant collapse. here it is totally collapsing here it is yes, this also is uh, collapsing more not not as uh, uh, as severe as this one here it is almost totally collapsing so what will be the pressure in these two patients is usually around 0 to 2 what will be zero even sometimes even may be negative and these patients require rapid infusion of fluid especially if they are in uh, in hypotension this is a uh, the classical picture that you get in a patient with hypovolemic shock, shock. so you have to immediately push fluid actually uh, 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 the drip is not enough you have to take the fluid in a syringe and push it as quickly as possible and here what is the pressure in this patient uh 15 mm g sir yeah it will be it seems that there is no collapse at all and the the, the ivc also is distended so most likely the uh, the I, uh, right atrial pressure will be equal to or more than 15 15 15 yeah it will be 15 or more So by looking at the IVC, you will be able to find out the right atrial pressure. Okay, good. Now this is the uh, MOD. You can clearly see here. This is about size is one point nine and about one point six. So this is normally normal one. This is the one which is totally collapsed, where the pressure is zero uh, or one zero to two. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Sir, uh, uh, in the previous uh, video, sir, that first uh, uh, first. Uh, this first one it is having that uh, sort of auto contrast as how we uh, what is the significant of we have got seen in certain patients like uh, normal ivc flow but uh, uh, echogenic uh, flow is seen in like in first video sir you are saying that the, this is uh, this 
Let me see. Oh. You are saying that, uh, oh, okay, let me see first of all. The first uh, uh, let me see. Let me, let me move the slide first. Oh. Okay, this one. Yes, sir. Yes. That obviously usually means that there is some slowing of the circulation. But uh, uh, I may not give too much importance to that because uh, it is usually indicates there is some slowing of the uh, flow. But uh, uh, in the in, in the cardiac chambers, when you see this is a contrast, spontaneous contrast. That means uh, suggest that there is a significant stagnation of blood and they are prone to develop thrombosis, but not yes. uh, in the IVC. IVC, okay. we, you need not give importance. Okay. okay. Next Thank one. You. Okay. Uh, what is your uh, diagnosis? This is a patient who has got a prosthetic valve and uh, uh, present with acute breathlessness. And this is the uh, flow uh, pressure tracing across the mitral valve. And this is the tricuspid regurgitation. Prosthetic valve dysfunction, sir. Yes. Prosthetic valve dysfunction, or uh, you can consider prosthetic valve, stuck prosthetic valve, or a prosthetic valve thrombosis. Why did you say that? Uh, there is a significant uh, tricuspid regurgitation with raised mean. Uh, mean uh, uh, mean pressure across the mitral valve. Yes. And, there, the, and there is a turbulence noted across the mitral valves also. Yes. Uh, you, you can mean see pressure the, is 28.36. That is very very high across the mitral valve. Yes. There is very high pressure across the mitral valve. The peak pressure is up to 37. And the mean gradient is 28. 28, sir. Yeah. Okay. So that by indicating that there is a... So, the flow uh, the valve, uh, prosthetic value is significantly... Obstructive, Obstructive, giving rise to a high uh, gradient across the prosthetic valve. And that has resulted in uh, the back pressure valve. and uh, yeah, pulmonary arterial hypertension. Okay, very good. Yes, very good. Excellent. Okay. Okay, what is this? The P, sir, uh, and sir, we can see the uh, lead, pacing lead, sir. Okay, uh, I agree and with you. The spacing lead, okay. What else is there? The vegetation is there, sir. Vegetation is attached yes. to the septal vegetation. leaflet of that. Yes, you can septal see leaflet. vegetation. There's a vegetation in the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. Mm. So this is a, a tricuspid uh, uh, infective endocarditis in a patient who had a permanent pacemaker yeah, yeah, implant, yeah. A PPI, permanent pacemaker implant. So this is one of the complications you should always uh, uh, keep in mind. When a patient with pacemaker comes with recurrent pneumonia, the, the presentation of this patient was with recurrent pneumonia because of the infected embolus going into the lungs, causing patches of pneumonia. So he had actually come with recurrent episodes of pneumonia and echocardiogram revealed a, a large vegetation in the tricuspid valve in a patient with a permanent pacemaker implantation. Okay, so always think of the possibility of a, a infective endocarditis in a patient with a, a permanent pacemaker implanted especially when the patient presents to you with recurrent episodes of pneumonia. Okay, tell me where the catheters are. You must be able to say without any difficulty where the catheters are and why do you say that? Which view is this? This is a, uh, which view is this? Is a LA view or RA view? And tell me, uh, 
uh, the position of the catheters and why are you saying that? So this is RAO view. Okay, very good. And sir, uh, the uh, one one pigtail is there, sir, oh. which is uh, going from the femoral artery mm. uh, to the aorta, mm. uh, uh, then to the LV. Okay, very good, excellent. And the other one, sir, which is on the right side, that is from the uh, femoral vein to the RA to RV to the sir pulmonary artery, then sir to the mm, uh, sir, maybe sir, uh, one of the branch pulmonary artery. Yes, and it has gone to a? Sir, yeah. Yes, sir. Mm. A wedge position. Yes, sir, wedge position. Sir, so, it's uh, not how, moving. How can you diagnose whether the, the, whether the catheter is wedged or not? Not moving. One is not moving. One, sir, two. the tip of that catheter, sir. Yeah, the tip of the catheter is not moving. That usually means it is wedged. What are other uh, uh, indicators of wedging? Sir, if we take the PO sampling of ABG, as ABG, then hundred percent, sir. Okay, very good. Saturation free, free. and third uh, point waveforms. Waveforms, wave yes, yes, yes. What is the waveform? Leptitial waveforms. Yes, the venous waveform. You will see a venous waveform in a patient when the catheter is wedged. Till the time it is wedged, it will be an arterial waveform. And once it is wedged, you will see a venous waveform. It's a change in the pattern of the waveform. And sometimes the respiratory variation also is an additional point. Uh, when the catheter is wedged, it will be influenced by the, catheter, the respiratory variation of the pressure. While the arterial pressure tracing, which is there till the catheter is not wedged, will not have significant variation with respiration. So four points. One, catheter tip uh, remains fixed. One. Two, when you withdraw blood and look for oxy oximetry, 100% oxygen saturation. The three, the waveform may changes from the arterial to venous pattern. And four, uh, there can be a respiratory variation of the pressure in a patient who is already wedged. So this is a catheter on the right side is wedged. On the left side, catheter is in the left ventricle. And this is an RIO view. Very good. Excellent. Oh, pressure data. Yes, she might have analyzed previously, but uh, there is no harm in repeating the analysis. Uh, sir. Oh. Uh, sir, HSVC is 60, sir. LSVC is 61. IVC 64, uh, RA 61, RV 62, uh, pulmonary artery is uh, 70, sir. Uh, so there is a step up uh, here, sir, at the level of pulmonary artery. Okay, very good. Uh, then pulmonary artery, which uh, is 99%, uh, LV is 86%. So there is a step down here, sir. Okay. Uh, aorta is 85. Okay. So there is a no uh, step down. There's a, step, there's a step up at the level of the pulmonary artery and step pulmonary down artery. at the level of uh, a, uh, LV. LV, okay, right, yes, good. Look at the pressure data and then you correlate both these two. Uh, in pressure data, sir, uh, RA is uh, uh, 8, uh, A wave 8, V wave 8, uh, mean is 6, sir. Hmm. This is almost a normal, sir. Okay. Uh, then RV pressure is 120 by 8. Uh, the RV is uh, RV inlet is 120 by 8, sir. Mm. And RV outlet is uh, 40 by 8. Okay. So there is gradient between inlet and outlet, sir. Okay. Uh, then pulmonary. It, uh, rather outflow. than inlet, is inflow and outflow. That's more correct. Uh, inflow and yes, sir. Uh, inflow and outflow. Uh, what about uh, the RV so, systolic pressure uh, in the uh, outflow? Is it normal or elevated? Uh, it is on a higher, I mean, it's on a higher side, sir. It's 40. on higher side. Okay, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, pulmonary artery is uh, 40 by 20, sir. There is no gradient between outflow and uh, uh, pulmonary artery, sir. Okay. And uh, pulmonary artery mean pressure is 26, mildly elevated, sir. Okay, very good. Then uh, pulmonary artery wedge pressure, uh, 8 and uh, mean is 8, sir. Mm. So that is also uh, almost normal, sir. Okay, very good. Excellent. Uh, 
then lv is 120 by 8 sir mm-hmm. uh, that is also normal okay uh, aorta is 120 by 70 that is also normal sir okay Yeah, it will be. Uh, if you want, you can say that what is process slightly increased, but uh, I would agree with you that it's normal. Okay, yes. Mm-hmm. So your interpretation. Hello, Nikhil. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Where are you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh. There is a out outflow obstruction. Uh, just a minute, sir. There is a gradient across the. Uh, RV inflow and outflow, sir. Yes, there is a gradient between the RV inflow and outflow. And also the, uh, uh, the equalization of pressures. Yes, sir. Can we end? Ah, yes, sir. Equal equalization of pressure in LV and RV. There is a large VSD. Uh, yeah, there is RV, can... LV, and aortic systolic pressure, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, normal, saying... sir. So it is top. Okay, no, no, you don't use the word normal. They are equal. Yes, sir. Equal. Ah, uh, tetralogy of fallot, sir. Yeah. So whenever you get the equalization of pressure. Of the RV, LV, and aorta, you should think of the possibility of tetralogy. Fallot, sir. Top. Hello. So they go look at the hemodynamic oximeter data. Does it support your diagnosis of tetralogy, fellow? Yes. Ah, yeah. Does it support? Uh, yes, sir. Your, there, uh, there is a prominent right to left uh, shunt, sir. That's why there is step down uh, at LV level, sir. Yes, very good. So uh, there is a step down at LV, so that uh, that helps you to. Uh, that is that that is a, a point for you to suspect that patient may be having the trolley fellow. But then yes. is it uh, you said there is a great there is a pressure there is an oximetry step up at uh, pulmonary artery level. Can that happen in a patient with a trolley fellow? Any uh, shunt? Uh... Sir, there is a shunt has been made, sir. Yeah, there is a there is a shunt. Uh... Shunt. This is shunt coming to the pulmonary artery, okay. and it may be a man-made shunt. Okay. It could be a man-made shunt. Do you think it's a man-made shunt? And what type of a man-made shunt is it? A, what are the different man-made shunt uh, that is being usually carried out in a patient with a trolley fellow? Name them. So BT shunt. BT shunt. Then pot shunt. Pot shunt. Water shunt. Uh, shunt. Water shunt. Uh, then. Uh... And. Gortex shunt. Ah, uh, gortex shunt. Yes. Of the, what is the difference between all these four? Ah, uh, among all sir, these four, what is the difference? So BT shunt may be classical BT shunt and uh, a modified BT shunt, sir. Okay. Ah, uh, in BT classical. BT shunt is uh, uh, peripheral shunt, whereas the others are central shunts. Eh? What so, is the port shunt? Port shunt is central, so between the aorta and the uh, uh, LPA. Okay. So the uh, water shunt and parts are exposed to the uh, water shunt and parts shunts are not done not done nowadays because there is increased chance of uh, yeah. uh, pulmonary vascular changes. It okay. is directly exposed to the aortic pressure. Yes. Whereas in the modified blood blood modified BT shunt, uh, uh, the shunt flow is uh, predictable and there is a less chance for uh, d- damage to the p- peripheral pulmonary arteries. Okay. What is so the modified? What is the difference between modified uh, BT shunt and BT shunt? Modified BT shunt, they use a uh, got a PTFA or Gortex uh, patch yes. between the subclavian artery and the uh, uh, corresponding uh, pulmonary arteries. It can be done on both side. Uh, no limb modified. Uh, there is no limb ischemia. There is uh, no chance of limb ischemia on the uh, side of uh, this thing. But there is a chance of increased seroma uh, uh, when compared to the uh, blood BT shunt. 
Yes. Um, the British and is so the problem is that you have to sacrifice so the classical British and uh, in the early life only can be done, sir. Otherwise, uh, there is decrease in the blood flow to that uh, limb can cause yes. sir. You you have to uh, you have to uh, ligate. Uh, you have to divide the. Uh, Uh, Sorry, uh, endocyte anastomosis in BT. Endocyte anastomosis. Yes. British and yes. is endocyte anastomosis. It is side sacri- to side. They, yeah. they, they sacrifice the uh, subclavian artery, hoping that the collaterals will be enough to supply the uh, blood to the corresponding uh, upper limb. While in uh, modified BT shunt, which is a Gore-Tex shunt, or you can use any other material, where it is an endo, uh, 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 it is a side, side to side. side. Side to side anastomosis because of that there is no need to sacrifice the uh, artery and now it is it is sac- uh, uh, that is the uh, uh, shunt that is being carried out. What is the indication for uh, this type of shunt? Are we doing it nowadays or we don't do it? So the indication uh, the we, size of the pulmonary emergency... artery very small. Then yes. sir, we do it. You should or most do it in order to. in order to for to attain a good growth of the pulmonary artery if the pulmonary artery is small and where you think that it is not possible to uh, do a total correction then you do a, 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 a vitation and allow the pulmonary artery to grow to grow reach the adequate size then you can do a total correction so mostly in patients where there is a uh, 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 pulmonary arteries are being very uh, are very small and for the growth of the pulmonary artery we make use of the vitation okay very good yes so here is the Uh, so British and uh, probably it is a, a central shunt which has been done to this patient. That is because the patient has the already developed some degree of pulmonary vascular reaction. Pulmonary artery pressure is lessen, and there is uh, some evidence of pulmonary vascular uh, uh, pulmonary vascular changes suggestive of a large pulmonary blood flow. And the patient had a central shunt. So uh, how will you calculate the right to left shunt and left to right shunt, Nikhil? Uh, how will you, you tell me the formula that's enough what you are what, what how will you calculate and then you tell me how will you detect the left right shunt flow right left shunt flow uh sir so left to right uh, left to right shunt is uh, q effect q minus uh, qp Tell me what's more. Uh, uh, Q uh, Q uh, Q P minus uh, Q P minus uh, Q E P effective. Uh, yes, Q Q P minus Q effective is will be equal to uh, left to right shunt. No, no, right to left shunt. Right. Okay, sir. That will give you an idea about the right to left shunt. Left to right shunt. Yes. Uh, left to right shunt. Uh, Q S minus Q E B. Ah, oh, okay. And what is the formula to calculate the effective pulmonary blood flow and effective systemic blood flow? What is the formula? Uh, VO2 divided. Uh, sorry, you're right. Mm. VO2 divided by uh, uh, mag. No, sir, I don't remember exactly. VO2 okay. divided by maximum minus minimum saturation. No, sir, I don't remember. Okay, anybody who would like to help him? VO2 divided by is it for Q effective? So we yeah. have to calculate. So Q effective first we calculate. Ah. Huh. Uh, sir, in that one, sir, VO2 divided by sir, uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, PVO2 minus mixed venous, sir. Okay, very good. Pulmonary venous oxygen saturation minus uh, mixed venous mixed venous oxygen saturation. The uh, oxygen consumption divided by systemic. Uh, sorry, uh, pulmonary venous uh, oxygen saturation minus system uh, mixed venous oxygen saturation. That is the formula to calculate the Q effective. the uh, effective pulmonary blood flow which is equal to the effective systemic blood flow and uh, you can cal- uh, calculate the uh, left to right shunt and right to left shunt using the standard formula and from that you detect and then you get the 
standard right left side standard left right side okay good right this you might have already seen but still you can see once more tell me what is the recording and where is the injection given and what all things are what all things you can make out where is the injection given there is injection given into the pulmonary artery pulmonary artery yeah this injection is given into the pulmonary artery and we are recording what piece main recording is done in the liver piece we are recording the liver piece on the what is happening on the left side of the heart so we are recording on the liver piece and what are the things that you find here the pulmonary av fistula why did you diagnose pulmonary av fistula because sir we are uh, very early sir we are getting sir left atrial um, so feeling anybody who would like to have some other some, some other thought process it is a Uh, injection in the pulmonary artery, and you are recording the liver, please. And tell me what you find. What is we don't do angiogram for these uh, these type of patients because uh, the, uh, this can be diagnosed without any difficulty by doing an echocardiogram. peripheral ps again sir peripheral ps no no not a peripheral ps see see what do you find here initially there is a injection into the pulmonary artery then what do you find here the the, the in the liver phase just come to the what is this chamber l sir oh, it is l left atrium and can you see uh, which is this chamber what is this chamber that is which one is contracting very powerfully that is a that is first one is rv second one is lv sir no this one is left atrium this one is a lv and in between you are seeing something so if you are seeing we are very careful you can see three chambers actually This is the atrium. Let us come to the middle chamber, and this is called the left ventricle. So we are seeing three chambers. So what is the diagnosis? The core triatrium. Core triatrium. It's a case of core triatrium where you can see the liver phase where you filling the the not exactly the left atrial part, the upper part of the left atrium, then the lower part, and the left ventricle. So this is a case of core. triatrium now it is we don't do an angiogram for core triatrium because that can be easily diagnosed by echocardiogram alone without any difficulty so this is a case of core triatrium where you can see three chambers in the liver phase of the cardiac cycle where you have injected the contrast into the pulmonary artery so contrast is injected the pulmonary artery has gone into the left atrium into the uh, middle chamber which is the lower part of the left atrium And into the left one again. So this is a case of core failure theater. What is the management? Anybody? Sir, so in core failure theater, the pulmonary veins which are draining uh, at the back, so they have to be so mobilized and uh, put into the uh, LA. Or if any membrane, anything present, that has to be resected. So why do you want to know? Normally, what is happening in the core triatrium? Where does the pulmonary veins drain? They drain to the upper chamber or lower chamber? The upper chamber. Upper chamber. And they drain normally, so you don't have to do anything about that. Mostly, it is a normal drainage. Sir, so, 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 so,
and uh, the uh, there is a septum between the upper chamber and the lower chamber the lower that chamber will have, lower chamber will have uh, the the uh, the left atrial appendage and uh, rest of the part of the left atrium and then what is the management the patient is asymptomatic if the patient is asymptomatic you can leave the patient and it can be followed up But if the patient has got symptoms, you can do an intervention by means of which you can dilate the uh, the orifice between the the so orifice in the septum between the upper and the lower uh, right left atrial chambers, and uh, that may be enough. But if the uh, if it is not possible to do a uh, opening up of the septum, patient is uh, symptomatic, then you should recommend a surgical excision of the uh, the septum, uh, something uh, of the membrane. in the left atrium so the left atrium membrane can be first uh, the opening in the left atrium membrane can be opened up by a balloon technique but if that is not possible then rarely you may require a surgical excision of the septum of the membrane so for triatriate the most of the patients they are not symptomatic it can be left alone and those patients who are having symptoms they may require a interventional treatment or may require a surgical rarely may require a surgical excision i think we we'll stop at that level i think we have seen a good number of uh, spotters uh, any doubts about things that we have discussed today you can ask now otherwise we'll stop we shall continue with the spotters in the next class also a few more shorter spotters are to be shown so we'll have a, a, a continuation of the spotters in the next class also and uh, subsequently we'll go for a case presentation so any doubts about what we have discussed today no sir okay thank you so we'll okay. good night good night and we will stop at this level thank you thank you sir okay bye good night good night sir good night okay uh, himachu i am leaving are you there himachu So from here, I'm ending this.